Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Leake, along with Army Armstrong. We're in Memphis, Tennessee. It's a hot, windy day, and the competition's going to be hot also because we've got two levels of competition, super stocks and the modified. Both of them tractor categories this afternoon, Richard. The super stock tractors will be coming out with a lot of familiar names to the people in the agricultural industry. The only difference between these tractors and the ones you see in the field are the number of turbochargers they use to make horsepower. Then we bump up into the modified tractor category at 9,200 pounds. It's a run with your brawn class. You can run one engine with a lot of weight, many engines. We have vehicles running as many as five engines in competition, so we should have a Donnybrook on our hands this afternoon. Well, if you think the machines are going to be super, wait till you find out about the competition tonight. Competition is starting to face up with the national championship race starting to go. A young kid out of Kentucky is the leader, but Dave Banner's coming after him hot and heavy. And we're going to be back from Memphis, Tennessee with the Super Stocks in just a moment. Side. Army Armstrong will be trackside, a nice capacity crowd here in Memphis to start off the competition with the Super Stockers. And it's going to be Esden Lane out of Dayton, Minnesota starting the competition. Actually, Army, Esden's driving two vehicles in this competition, his own. Redline Fever coming to the line now, and he'll come back next and never enough. He's one of the top guns as far as drivers in this particular competition. The Super Stock Tractors, the crowd really gets involved with them. A couple of reasons. Number one, they can identify the international people. They pull for the international. You pull for your product brand. The case here, we're watching this and take a shot. Draws the number one spot. Keep an eye on the smoke of the tractor. It's kind of a telltale sign. When it turns black, he's making horsepower. One of the busiest drivers in the sport will be a super stock driver. He's watching the turbocharged boost, as many as four turbochargers. Watching his water injector, trying to throttle up. His right hand's on the throttle. As it starts to roll, keep an eye on him. He'll start to plant the horsepower. Right now, Richard, he's coming your way. They've got about a 1,500 horsepower going down that track. He looks like a rolling freight train right now. Lane out of Minnesota is just smoking it down this track in Memphis and he has got a full pull in the red line fever. What a way to start the super stock competition with a full pull by Esden Lane out of Dayton, Minnesota in the red line fever tractor. Richard, we were talking earlier today with these fellows about the engineering. They're probably some of the most sophisticated equipment in the pulling sport. The technology here is phenomenal. Well, I know Army earlier this afternoon, you spent some time with Edson Lane and he discussed the super stock smokers. In the sport of professional pulling, there are five categories. The Super Stockers, one of the most awesome classes that participate on the TNT Red Man Tour. One of them standing behind me. They call it the Red Line Fever out of Minnesota. Esden Lane does the driving of the vehicle. And I tell you what, Esden, you fellas put on a super show out here on the Red Man Tour with us. Yes, we do. We try to go out there and put a good show on for the, with the fans and everything. Try to generate all the different colors of all the Super Stock tractors and farm tractors that are available to all the farmers. Now, the crowd appeal is one of the most interesting parts of the super stocks. It appears to be a stock vehicle. However, the appearance is about where it stops. Right, Edison? Yes, it is. We run, you know, upwards of 10 to uh, 12 times more horsepower than what you can buy off the show showroom floor. Can you show us a little bit of that horsepower? Yes, I can. You know, the turbochargers are coming to motorsports in the last 10 years, but I have never in my life, Essen, seen as many turbos on one vehicle as we're looking at on your super stock tractor. Now, this is all uh, different pressure stages here. These turbos here, they gather air, and it uh, compresses it into another turbocharger, and then we just go and we get a compressor in another one before it goes into the manifold, into the motor on the stock block of this international tractor. So the only piece that we're actually looking at now that is international is the block itself? Every yes, that's it. This is the stock block and, and, and cylinder head at the moment. Out of curiosity, what is the total horsepower you're making right now with your super stock tractor? Oh, we're upwards around 1,800 to 2,000 horsepower. Can you imagine plowing a field with that much horsepower? These tractors are stock in appearance. Edston Lane already with a full pull the first time out, and he's coming right back on the track now with uh, Brett Berg's tractor called Never Enough and uh, Esden looking to make it more than enough, Army. Well, Never Enough is uh, is an up-and-coming tractor. Esden has a higher driver. He's kind of like, you know, he's a pro driver. They want him to drive. They know what he can do. He has a handle on the track. He knows where the track will hold the horsepower. One thing I would like for the people to listen to the sound of the vehicles. You never hear the tractor run. All you hear through those turbochargers is the air going into the engine and the air coming out of the engine. He's back to black, meaning he's at maximum horsepower. Richard, he's coming your direction. Edson Lane is off and running in the Never Enough tractor. Already one full pull for Edson Lane. He looks like he's going to roll across the line for a second consecutive full pull. Edson Lane and Never Enough makes it two in a row. Another full pull this time in the Brett Berg tractor. 
tractor. And what a day he is having Edston Lane. Two pulls, both of them the distance of the track. So that goes to prove it certainly pays to hire this guy out, Edston Lane, to drive your tractor. Let's go trackside now with Army. Edston Lane out of Minnesota doing double duty today. We've got two full pulls. This is a man responsible for both of them. You're kind of on a roll out here. Yeah, I've been having a pretty good year since uh, Super Bowl started coming around and everything, and we got some pretty decent equipment here, and we're just trying our best. Well, now, you're first, second with both full pulls. What's going to happen in the rest of the field? The handwriting's on the wall. In order to get into this thing, they've got to make a full pull. Is there anybody behind us that can do that? Well, there's another one or two tractors that can do it. Depends on what the track does, if the track and distance change or anything. Well, I tell you what, we'll let you get back to the action. We know you're going to be busy. Right now, they're shooting for the man out of Minnesota. And I'll tell you, one of the guys that could take him is a former Redman TNT National Super Stock Champion back in 1987, Mark Gettinger. He's out of Indiana. He's driving the Equalizer. Gettinger, he's an up-and-comer. He knows what he's going to have to do. What he must do right now, Mark is under pressure. The Equalizer has to make a bonsai run. He's going to put all the horsepower he possibly can to the track. From a distance, we can watch him sitting on the sled. Remember, these fellas are watching so many gauges. They're getting the boost on all the turbochargers. Not just one turbocharger, Richard, as many as four. They're looking at the water injector. Look at his eyes. Back and forth, they dart, looking at all the gauges. He gets ready to roll on the throttle. He's got to make the strongest run of his life. If he's going to get in a full pull, he's making some horsepower. Oh, no, wait a minute. He explodes just off the finish, start finish line. Mark Gettinger's engine just explodes goes into pieces the alice chalmers d21 super stock tractor just falls apart you saw immediately mark gettinger climb off and run away from the vehicle army is down there at it now we're going to be going down to army armstrong to talk with mark gettinger to find out what happened as the explosion just rips apart the equalizer machine of mark gettinger of course, this is one of the hazards that the, these drivers face and also uh, some of the danger they face being on the super stock machine is exactly what happened here. Let's go down to Army now with Mark Gettinger. Mark Gettinger, this experienced one of the most violent explosions we've seen in this sport in many a year. Mark, what exactly happened on that shot? Uh, I tried a higher gear and I guess it just worked it too hard. Um, I did some changes to the tractor and I think I had a little more power than I usually do. and and. Uh, she just let loose the block you know i've been pulling with that block for two years now and it just let loose well i'll tell you what we're glad you're okay we wish you the best of luck in the future you know in drag racing every now and then you get a bye run circle track you get yellow laps in this sport when you hook to that sled you got to go as hard and as long as you can it was not to be getting your day but thank goodness mark getting your okay his tractor ripped to shreds we'll be back at the memphis motorsports park where army the fans are still a buzzing about what just happened to Mark Gettinger's tractor just exploding coming off the start line. You know, these tractors were designed to generate, with the same blocks they're running today, they're designed to generate around 180 to 200 horsepower. You're talking 2,000 horsepower here, 10 times the normal horsepower. He goes off under the hook. Believe me, they're going to be looking for some relief valves or pop-off valves to stop that problem in the future, Richard. Well, not much left there of Mark uh, Gettinger's tractor, the super stock, as he has that. That brings to the line next in the competition, though, his brother, Neil Gettinger, out of Indiana with the International Harvester Machine. Well, the Gettinger boy is definitely back in town. I don't believe that the previous incident will bother this young man at all. He is a strong charger. He lines up, as a matter of fact, in the same tracks as his brother. He knows he's got to go after Edson Lane. You can see the horsepower coming in. He rolls off the clutch. Richard, once again, they're coming your direction. Here comes Neil Gettinger. He has got to get a full pull if he's going anywhere today. He has got the steamroller going down the track right now. It looks like a great pull. Neil Gettinger has got himself a full pull, and he is going to move into a pull-off with Edson Lane out of Dayton, Minnesota. He had to get exactly what he did get. You saw him disengage the engine uh, by letting off the clutch with his left foot. It is now Gettinger moving into the finals, a pull-off with Esden Lane out of Minnesota, and here he comes in the Red Line Fever Machine Army. His own vehicle, the hired gun, we told you about him. He's dialing in the horsepower, goes to black, looks at the gauges, right hands on the throttle, rolls off. Starting a final shot, let's see what's gonna happen. He'll set the pace for the pull-off. He's on the way. Here comes Lane. The freight train is rolling in the Red Line Fever down this Memphis track. He is starting to bog down a little bit. He will not get a full pull, but a great pull of 288.45 feet. Esden Lane as we are in the pull-offs of this super stock competition. Esden Lane has set the distance to beat now, Army. 
He's going to be tough to beat, but he has to beat himself. He rolls out on Brent Berg's vehicle, never enough. He can still put him away. He is a hired gun. He knows what he has to do. He's paid to win. Let's see what's going to happen. He will not backpedal at all. He's going after that lead distance, which is himself. Good ground speed, Richard. It's looking awfully close on your end. He has got to be 288 to beat himself. It's going to be close. 286.06 feet. As Delane and the hired out machine, never enough. Next up on the line in the pull-off, though, is going to be Neil Gettinger, the only guy left that can knock off Lane out of Minnesota. And, of course, Lane earlier had the two full pulls. Now Gettinger is going to try to get a full pull to win it. We have got Edston Lane down trackside with Army to call it for us. Let the clutch out. He's off to the races. Getting a little bent out of shape in the sideline, but he's still looking pretty good. Sled slowed him up pretty fast. Yes. Kind of got under the turbos there a little bit. Well, I guess it's time for me to congratulate Lou. It looks like you're going to take a win this afternoon on a Redman Tour. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you very much. So Edson Lane is our winner of the Super Stock Division. That's the division of tractors most like those you see on the farms. Now we're moving into the division, the Modifieds. These are the tractors that are most furthest away from what you might find on a farm as the fans enjoy all the competition. And Richard Wisnut is going to be our first competitor. He's driving Brigadier. Out of Union Grove, Alabama, this is an Allison aircraft-powered vehicle. You must remember in this sport, you've got to weigh 9,200 pounds. Now, you want to run one engine, five engines, aircraft engine, in this case, the Allison engine, 1,712 cubic inches or whatever. It's an open class as far as what you run. You just must weigh 9,200 pounds, and Wisnut not able to make the horsepower he needs to be competitive this afternoon. Afternoon. Well, from the very start of his pull, you could tell by the sound of the engines, the multi-engines he's got in that machine, he just did not have it together. Richard Wisnett with not a very good distance on his pull, only 196.20 feet for Richard Wisnett down in the first pull of the competition of these modified tractors. We're going to be going trackside here in just a moment with Army Armstrong. He's going to talk to Richard, find out what the problem was with the Brigadier machine as he heads back into the pit areas right now as his day probably over because that is not going to be a pulling distance to win today. Let's go trackside with Army. Richard, one engine against as many as six this afternoon. Do you think you're going to have a shot at it? I really doubt it. They've probably got me out horsepower by uh, two or 3,000 horsepower. Well, one of the guys that has got to be considered the favorite coming to the line now, Pat Friels, is the current Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series National Points Leader, and he is off and running, but sky and high. Light on the nose, Friels with a five Chevrolet engine, making a horsepower, has good ground speed, the Angler chassis working awfully well, teamed up with the Chevrolets, he will go into the lead, Richard. Well, they call the machine the Dollar Devil, he's got a pulling distance of 277.78 feet, that is Pat Friels, and he's a veteran on the circuit in the Army. Currently the national points leader. We would love to see what this young man can do. He's he's making a living. This is what he does for a living now, Richard. Well, they call the machine the Dollar Devil, and you can see why. Five massive Chevrolet engines up front, Army. The supercharged big block Chevrolets run around $30,000 a pop, Richard. What's unique about... Richard Leake back with you in Memphis, Tennessee, where the shootout has really just begun, Army, because coming to the line next, David Banner, a 16-time national champion. He is currently right behind Pat Friels in the point standings. Behind Friels in the point standings, he brought two tractors with him this evening, both of them powered by six Chevrolet engines. He's known as the old fox. He could be Pat Friels' worst nightmare on this run. Friels is watching. Banner has the weight perfect. Good ground speed. He's shooting for the orange cone on the left side of the track. That's a lead distance, Richard. David Banner and the Mr. Chevy with a pull of 276, just a foot under Pat Friels, who is trackside now with Army Armstrong. Pat Friels out of Island, Kentucky, currently your leader. Pat just dodged a big bullet. The Banner brothers took a shot at you. They fell about a foot shy. How you feeling right now? All real great. Feel forced and I feel like a, at least a 100-pound light on the front. The tractor's been working real good for me this year. Really like to thank people helped me. Ingle Cam, Westy Crest Trucking for helping me get to these places. But uh, TNT... I think he got a great circuit, and we're really looking forward to running with him. All right, that's your leader, Pat Friels, as he tries to dodge another bullet now. This is Mike Piper. Now, he bought this tractor recently from Leo K, a Redman TNT national champion back in 1987. He is driving the master of disaster, and he's off and running Army. Tremendous wheel speed, 160 mile an hour wheel speed, an appropriate name for this tractor. Look at that, wheels up, he's going after it, attacking the track, Richard. One thing interesting about Piper is he brings it to the finish there at a distance of 282.40. This is Piper's first run in a five-engine tractor. 
first run puts him in the number one spot. Well, the crowd is loving what they just saw from Mike Piper. Let's go trackside with Army. Mike Piper out of Mount Vernon, Illinois. Only the sixth shot on the tractor as a driver, and you're the new leader by five feet. How's it make you feel? Well, kind of excited right now. Makes you feel pretty good. It was a very exciting run being up that high and, you know, the power we've got. We never run with five on this tractor. It was different. I noticed the man you just bumped into the number two spot, Frills out of Kentucky, he was light on the nose. You scotted a little bit too light. If you had to make any changes, what would they be? Well, I'd probably use a little more noise weight where I could use the throttle a little bit more. I had to back out of it, keep it in the track. I had to get on the brake off the hard. And I couldn't turn it without backing off the hard so We just uh, backed down and probably put more weight on it. Well, an exciting time now for Mike Piper as he has got the lead, but he's got to be a little apprehensive also because sitting in the wings is that gentleman there, David Banner, a 16-time national champion. He is coming back to the line with his second vehicle today. Earlier this afternoon, Army Armstrong spent some time with the legendary Banner Brothers. Standing with me, I have Dave and Ralph Banner, the Banner Brothers pulling team. They run a two-vehicle combination standing behind us the awesome Chevrolet horsepower that has propelled them to many national championships. My extreme right is Ralph Banner. He's the man that takes care of all the maintenance, keeps it running. He and his brother Dave, a very close-knit family team, similar to the Kenzer brothers, also of Indiana, with their famous sprint car racing. But these guys put it to good use in the sport of professional pulling. 16 times national champion, you know you got to be considered a legend in the sport. How do you feel every time you go into an event knowing everybody's coming after the Banner brothers? It's kind of a hard question for me. I I feel like every, in any sport, you need to go after somebody to beat. We have people that we, I, I don't want to name names, but we want to beat. And if we do beat them, we know we're going to be on top. And I'm sure they're the same way. That makes good for good compatibility. You know, if they're gunning for us, that's great. If they can get around us, boy, we're going to work harder. You know. Dave, how do you feel about it? Well, you know, it, it's, there's some pressure on it. You know, you come into an event and everybody's looking at you, you know, like uh, they expect you to do good. And uh, you know, it, it, it isn't always easy to go out there and lay down that picture-perfect run, you know. And uh, we've tried every trick that we can to, to make us get where we're at. And uh, uh, we didn't do it completely by horsepower, even though that we do have six engines. They're not six of the biggest engines built, you know. So it's... Uh, uh, it's the same now, I feel like, that it was 10 years ago, you know, when we was coming up the ladder or whatever. You know, it's still a hard game out here to, to go out there and run against them guys. You know, it's kind of interesting. The bottom line to what I've just heard is you've got to work hard, you've got to work long to stay on top in this sport as in any kind of motor sports. Well, David Banner has especially got his work cut out for him now. He's got to beat Mike Piper's pull of 282.40 feet. David Banner for his second pull today, this time in the machine Fox, and he's off and running. Six-engine Chevrolet combination. Good ground speed. Takes off. Something went wrong, Richard. He slowed down tremendously. Does not have the power he needs to make this run. David Banner shuts it down after a pull of only 231.85 feet. Nowhere close to what he's going to need to win the competition today in Memphis. David Banner with one of the most beautiful machines on the entire circuit. Not going to win it today, Army. What well, a tough break for Banner. We're going to go down and check it out. Well, the legendary David Banner had the Mr. Chevy tractor and the Fox tractor here. Neither of them will win it. Let's go trackside now with Army. Dave Banner brought two bullets with him in Memphis, Tennessee. Dave, unable to put the combination together this afternoon to take a win. What exactly we got down the future for us here? Well, I don't, I don't know. I had a few problems here. You know, we've been... Uh, Working on our tractors this winter, you know, we've been off all winter and trying to get them to go on and uh, uh, having a little trouble getting some of the bugs out of them. I think I'm, I'm getting close. I've got some different types of intakes on them and stuff. And uh, uh, sometimes it takes a little while to get all that sorted out. Well, I noticed as soon as the run was over, Ralph came over and was looking. Now, we noticed the middle engine on the right side. That engine is, is of no use whatsoever. You uh, lost the supercharger belt on that. That had to affect that pull. Oh, yeah. I lost that quite early, and uh, once it goes, it shut, it's actually like shutting down two of the motors, and you just can't do that in this game. You know, everybody's turning so much horsepower now that you got to have them all running good to, to get in, in the winter circle. Well, Dave Banner took a shot in Memphis. He's going to have to wait for another day to go in the winter circle, but believe me, everybody in this sport knows the Banner boys are back in town. We're going upstairs to Richard now. Well, Army, it's been a tough luck day for the Banner brothers, and when we come back to the Memphis Motorsports Park, there's only one guy left that can knock off the master of disaster. We're waiting for Jesse Pendleton and the Piddler tractor. 
And we'll have him rolling your way when we come back to Mid Elbows down to one tractor left. It belongs to Jesse Pendleton out of Ohio. He drives the Piddler machine. Jesse is a former minor league baseball player, but Army, I hate to say it, but he'll probably strike out in this competition. He's going to weigh a tremendous amount of horsepower. He's only running one Chrysler Hemi engine. Now, this tractor is very competitive in the lighter classes, but the heavier classes, it takes a multi-engine combination to work. And as you can see, he's not developing any ground speed whatsoever. Pendleton already slowing down. Now he shuts it down after a pulling distance of only 117.14 feet. That means your winner today, Mike Piper, the first time out and the master of disaster. We're going to go trackside with Army Armstrong and the winner now. Mike Piper bought him a super piece of equipment a few weeks ago, and he's already in the winner circle with it. Out of Illinois, he took the five-engine five Aries tractor to a victory in Memphis. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you very much. I for sure appreciate you guys being here also. Well, I tell you what, behind every successful motorsport operation, I know you got to have a crew. Is there anybody in your crew you want to thank for this first win? Yeah, I'd like to thank my wife, Barb, and my very good friend, Eric Anderson, for helping me out this weekend. It meant a lot to me. Well, best of luck in 88 on the Red Man Tour. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, our congratulations to Mike Piper as we look at the top five today. Richard Wisnut in fifth place. Fourth went to the legendary David Banner in his Fox machine. David also took third place in Mr. Chevy. Second place this afternoon went to your current national points leader, Pat Friels. But the winner this afternoon, Mike Piper. Comes out first time out of the box, so to speak, and nails all the big boys to the wall. So the master of disaster wins it this afternoon.